Hey, it's Tuxedo Mark. Uh, it's 10.49 p.m. on Wednesday, September 22nd, 2021. And um, I'm going to be doing episode reviews of a new series. Uh, it's actually not a new series, but it's new to me. Uh, it's actually from before my time. It's called The Prisoner. And it's a British series that ran from 1967 to 1968. Um, I had, I had heard about this series before and I'd read about it. Um, never saw it, never, probably never even saw a man of it. Um, but it's on Tubi for free with ads. So I figured, Hey, why not? It's only 17 episodes long. I might as well check it out. Hey, random cactus. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so this series, it's kind of like, it's kind of surreal. It's like, you're not sure exactly what's going on. But basically, the gist is that uh, the series stars uh, an actor named Patrick McGuhan. He plays the prisoner or number six as he's referred to we never learn his name apparently um he resigns from some kind of organization that he works for and we see this happen in like the first few minutes of the first episode um he's in a hurry he drives there he submits his resignation he drives back to his apartment or i guess i should say uh, flat and he is knocked out by some knockout gas while he's packing a suitcase apparently he wants to leave the country probably or something and when he wakes up he's in a house somewhere goes out and explores and he looks around and he's in this place called the village um it looks like a kind of like an out of the way small country village um but it's kind of weird it's got like these weird street signs um like let's say walk on the grass but it's like four signs one on top of another that says walk on the grass and there are various other signs throughout the village that have weird messages on them that they might or might not mean something. Who knows? Uh, thanks, Ram Cactus. All right, so he's in uh, this house referred to as like number six. I guess that's like the address number. But as it, as it turns out, it's also going to be his number. They don't refer to him by his name. They just call him number six. And First, when he arrives, he tries walking around, looking at various places in the village, asking for help. He tries using the phone. He tries talking to people. He tries getting a map. He tries using a taxi service, which won't leave the village. Basically, he's trapped there. He doesn't know why. But when he returns to the house, he gets a phone call that tells him to come to the number two building. So there's this guy referred to as number two that talks to him, but doesn't really give him any answers to his questions. Basically, he's a res he resigned. They're wondering why he resigned so abruptly. And they say that, you know, he's got a lot of knowledge. They don't say of what, but, through, but they want to make sure of whose side that he's on. He's like, I don't know who you are. I know what side you're on. Um, so, but apparently they have like been following him. Like when, he, when he, uh, number two, offers the servant breakfast, the server brings something to him 
And when number two questions, number six, what do you want for breakfast? Like how many strips of bacon and and all this other stuff. It turns out that's already been prepared the way that he wants it. So so they know that level of detail about him. And they've got a big screen in, in this surveillance room. And they, they can see all over the village, obviously. But what's odd is they've got a folder full of photographs of him. And as he flips the pages in this folder, the pictures appear on the screen. And I, I'm really not sure how that's supposed to work. But, yeah, they, they've they've taken a lot of pictures of him. They've followed him around for a long time, apparently. And they want to know what he knows. And I think they want to know something about him. And it's, re it's really not clear because this series is very... It's kind of cryptic and vague. Um, here's the thing, though. When I, I had read about this series, but the tone of it, while, while it is weird and odd, the, the musical score is kind of silly sometimes. It, they play, like, really silly-sounding music, that almost makes it seem like a comedy, even though it's not supposed to be. And and what uh, I think in multiple points during the first episode, I hear "Pop Goes the Weasel." So that's weird. Um, <laughs> anyway, he keep, uh, number six keeps trying to find clues on how to escape the village. There's a woman that agrees to try to help him supposedly like he could like if he has a certain item that she has he, he can use a helicopter to escape and i see number two number two took him for a helicopter ride across the village earlier and pointed out where all the buildings were um he was given like cards and credentials to be able to do stuff around the village but he's basically trap there he can walk around he can you know visit places he can attend a concert at the open air theater and he can do he can he's free to walk around there but he can't leave um there, there's like a store kind of like a butcher shop i guess or a general store um there's like a building for like village meetings. Um, inside the a cupboard in the house that he'll be staying at, there's canned food, but they're all like branded as, you know, village food. So it, that's really weird. Um, okay. So at one point he meets a guy that he knows um, that he knew from somewhere in the past. I forget what the, what his name was, but apparently that guy had been in Germany and he had been brought here also. And later on, soon after, he learns that the guy apparently jumped out a window and killed himself, or so they say. We don't actually see it happen. Apparently, it happened immediately while, you know, number six was at the hospital, but he didn't see it happen. He just hears them talking about it. Um, this guy is also, was also apparently friends or maybe romantically involved with a woman that tried to help number six es escape, but of course, it was all set up. She, she's working for them. Um, because he gets in a helicopter and he starts flying away and he thinks he can get away, but in the in number two surveillance room, by the way, there's like two number twos in this episode. Um, he gives a signal for them to take control, remote control of the helicopter and land number six back in the village. So he can't even leave that way. Also, and 
we saw this uh, earlier. There's there are these things like these giant white bouncing balloons that are kind of a deterrent, a way to keep people from escaping the village because if they try, the balloon's going to bounce after them. And we see it like get on top of one guy and stretching across his face. I guess like the lack of oxygen knocks him out. And after number six tries escaping in a helicopter and it lands, um, the balloon, it, it's walking after him, but he just walks away. But earlier in the episode, it did in fact knock him out and that's why he ended up in the hospital. Um, because he had caused a ruckus and he had tried to escape on one of the tractors that's used for transportation in the village. Yeah, they use like little tractors that look kind of like little golf carts. Um, so as punishment, that big balloon thing knocked him out. Like it was only a few on his face for a few seconds and then it landed on top of him. But apparently that's all that it took. Um, at the end of the episode, when he gets out of the helicopter, the balloon is kind of bouncing after him, but it doesn't do anything. Now, apparently from what I'm reading online on the wiki or the fandom or, or whatever, there's an alternate extended version of this episode that's been included on like DVD sets that have a few extra minutes of running time, like a few extra scenes, a different musical score. And apparently in this alternate version, the balloon does knock number six out at the end. Um, but yeah, so I, I assume I'm watching the standard version. Each episode is around 50 minutes long. This one was 51. I think there's another 51 minute episode later and there's one 49 minute episode, but yeah. This, since this is from the 60s, there was like less time for commercials. Uh, also, it, it's British, so they would probably have less commercials there anyway. So, yeah, it's definitely longer than an, than an episode today. Um, so... Basically, the, that's the setup of the series. And in each episode, he's probably going to try to find a way to escape. Um, let me look really quick and see if I'm missing anything. Oh, yeah, that guy's name was Cobb that died. Like the, the guy that he knew. Um but it turns out Cobb didn't uh, die. Uh, this was just an assignment of his, and now he's moving on to the next assignment. So he's he's uh, part of them. So it's like you can't trust anyone. Like number six can't trust anyone, even if... They say they're going to help him, even if there's someone that he recognizes from his life before this. I mean, they could all be working against him. This kind of reminds me of a series. and It's a fairly obscure series from the 90s that aired on UPN. Anyone remember UPN Network? Uh Basically, there was the WB and UPN, and later on they merged to form the CW. But on UPN, there was this series called Nowhere Man, and it starred Bruce Greenwood. He played like a photographer that had taken some kind of picture of a hanging of some people out in the jungle. And now there's this vast conspiracy that basically erases his life like he doesn't exist and he's wandering the, con the uh, country and he has the negatives for the photo and apparently they want it um, 
it's a similar mind trip series. Um, it got canceled on a huge cliffhanger, like not well, not a cliffhanger, but a huge revelation. But yeah, the prisoners giving off like similar vibes to that. By the way, I'm surprised at the quality of the episode. It looks really good and really vibrant and colorful. Um, imagine if, like, classic Doctor Who episodes look like that. Um, oh, hey, X-Pug. Thanks for joining me. So, so that's the first step. So that's kind of my impressions of it. I'm not going to try to analyze all of the various cryptic signs and messages throughout the throughout the series. I don't know if everything is actually meant to mean something, but there are like signs like that you're not supposed to ask questions, you're not supposed to want answers, stuff like that. Um, so, all right, so now a bit of uh, thing. You notice in the title for this uh, live stream, I did not put an episode number. This is episode number one, obviously. But in the case of The Prisoner, okay, there are 17 episodes, but other than the first episode arrival being first and the final two episodes being last, basically no one can agree on the order of the remaining 14 episodes. It's like, apparently, from what I've been reading, different fans of the series have different preferences uh, and different justifications for um, ordering the episodes in the way that they do. Um, apparently, fans have, like, analyzed each of the episodes very closely to try to determine a timeline, like to figure out like what time of year it is compared to other episodes and how long the number six has been at the village, stuff like that. Uh, whether number two is played by the same character, by the same actor in multiple episodes, Basically, they pour over the episodes, trying to find clues as to which order to watch them in and for what reason. And no one can agree on anything, apparently, <laughs> except that the first episode comes first and the final two episodes come last. Everything else is up for grabs. So that's why I am not going to be ordering the episodes in my vlog uh, titles because I'm actually not sure in which order that I'm going to be watching these episodes. I'm going to do some more research before I watch the next one to see if there's any kind of order that makes the most sense to me. I'm going to try not spoil myself on like what happens in the episodes, but I wanna, I, I wanna read the debate basically, and try to try to decide which order that I'm gonna watch the episodes. And now apparently, um, the producer and star Patrick McGoohan had his own preferred order, but he also said like only about seven of the episodes actually count out of the 17 and the rest are filler and don't matter according to him. So that would be his preferred order, but that's only seven episodes. Um, some people suggest the first time watching the series, watch it in his preferred order, only those seven episodes, just for the, fir for the first time that you view the series. Other fans are like, no, don't do that. Don't skip episodes for your first time watching it. So even so, they can't even agree on that. Um, 
but yeah, so I, I'm not sure which episode that I'm going to watch next, but I'll try to figure it out before I watch the next one. Um, so I, I guess that's all that I have to say about this episode. It, it, it's intriguing. Um, the tone wasn't quite what I expected. It, it's, it, I mean, the it's not from the dialogue itself or anything, but the music sometimes makes it seem a bit silly. Um, I don't know if I would call it a contro well controversial, not not in the sense of oh I or, uh, I hate this or this shouldn't be on television, not in that sense, but in the sense of it generates a a ton of debate among the fans. Apparently, obviously, I'm not part of the prisoner fandom, so, um, but apparently it has a devoted following, and for a series that's over 50 years old at this point, it, it's uh, it's definitely intriguing, and it's definitely something that I want to continue watching. Um. You see, here, here's the thing, though, X-Pug. Watch the episodes in order. What does that mean? Original air order? Or original production order? Um, so, yeah. Uh, some, sometimes episodes would even be aired out of their original intended order during the first airing because some episodes might not have been finished on time. So there's even, there's that to consider also. Um, but anyway, uh, Oh, one other thing that I should mention is apparently, and I have, I never saw this series, but apparently Patrick Magoo hand, also starred as a secret agent or a spy or whatever on a previous series called Danger Man. And one prevalent fan theory for the prisoner is that he's playing the same character from his previous series, even though I believe I read somewhere that Patrick mm -hmm. McGowan said no, but that is a prevalent fan theory. Um, So, uh, I don't think I have anything else to say about this episode. Um, yeah, so until next time, uh, it's 11, 12 p.m., and uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.